let's go back to the adrenals for a minute. So you mentioned running a Dutch panel, looking at low cortisol. So what you're saying is if you're going to see a flat panel or maybe just a, maybe it's not flat, maybe there is some sort of peak on the cortisol in the morning, but it's very weak. So overall, you would just say there's a low cortisol output. You're saying those people are going to tolerate intermittent fasting less. Those people are going to tolerate very low carbs less. So they may need a little more bump while they get their adrenals back on board. Is that safe to say? If their cortisol is really low. Mm -hmm. Yes. It just depends kind of where they're coming from, right? If they're coming from uh, being overweight, being more insulin resistant, um, being more tired, being more fatigued out of the gates, I'm always in a default to lower carb. If they're coming from already being at a reasonably healthy weight and being pretty active already, then I'm going to default to adding a little bit more carbs in. So it just depends upon where someone is coming from. So it's always good to look at someone's somatotype, right? Ectomorph, endomorph, mesomorph, right? Endomorphs like the, the lineman, right? In football. I mean, again, this could be like anyone, but they're just have a, a larger, a higher propensity to put on weight, right? The mesomorph, or then you have the ectomorph. This is more of the natural kind of basketball player type. They're just more taller and more leaner, hard to put on muscle, hard to gain weight. And then you kind of have a blend between an ectomorph and an endomorph called the mesomorph. Think of it as, as the M for middle, right? And this is kind of more like your linebacker in football, right? And again, these are extreme examples, but it helps to kind of tell the, tell the story, right? Not everyone's a 300 pound lineman. I get that, right? But people have this propensity to put on more weight. Uh, but a mesomorph, someone that's kind of more in the middle, like they could be taller and leaner, but they also can be bigger as well. They're kind of in between. And so usually people are in one of three of these categories. And usually if you're more on the ectomorph side, you're going to be able to tolerate carbs pretty well. Um, so you have to just kind of like, you know, see kind of where, where you feel best. And there's a lot of people out there, like, let's just say, let's people on the diet side, I'll just, I'll call Chris Kresser out, right? Chris Kresser is a ectomorph, right? Soup, you know, Paul Jaminet, ectomorph. A lot of people out there that like recommend more carbs, more higher carbs, more whole food carbs. And it's like, well, of course you're going to recommend that because you're an ectomorph, of course, mm -hmm. right? So you have to look at the people that are recommending certain things and look at what somatotype they are because certain somatotypes are going to have a propensity to handle macronutrients differently than someone else. So it's good to look at that as a general template, but in the end, you got to fine tune it. You got to look at it. My default way of looking at because of insulin resistance is being so prone because refined and processed foods have been eaten ubiquitously, you know, over the last 20, if you look at the macronutrient trends over the last 20 or 30 years, right? It's protein's gone down a little bit. Fats has actually gone down a little bit and, and actually carbs have gone up. So when you, when you look at that general trend, we can just assume out of the gates that most people are going to have carbohydrate problems, not protein and fat problems. And if they do have protein and fat problems, it's usually from junky trans fats and or junky omega-6 refined vegetable oils, not healthy animal fats. Yeah, very, very great point.